let's talk about pure strategies in extensive form game. Uh, so here, first the definition, and then I'm going to apply it to the same example we previously worked. So for any given extensive form game with set of players, histories, uh, 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 player function, uh, if nature moves, nature's probability distribution, the information set, and the payoffs. Well, the pure strategy for any player I, including the nature, nature is not a player, but we are going to treat it as if he or she is a player when we construct strategies, because later when we calculate expected payoffs, uh, well, then those strategies are going to be incorporated, the nature's strategies are going to be incorporated into the utility function. And so it's going to make our notations easier. So for that reason, uh, keep in mind, nature is not a player, but we are nevertheless going to include it, uh, it as if it is a player, at least when we give the mathematical notations. So strategy, pure strategy, is a function, all right, uh, which maps information partition of player i into an action in, uh, I mean, available for player i in the entire game. However, uh, there's a strict, uh, a very important pr a property of those functions. You cannot map any information set to any arbitrary action available for player. Uh, the matching has to be a, 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 a correct. How so? Player I's a strategy is actually a function, I'm sorry, an, an action. So SII is an action player I is going to take after information set I. Uh, but this action has to be an element, uh, an available element uh, that follows history H, where the history H is in this information set. And this has to be true, meaning every action attached to an information set actually should be an action available after that information set. All right, so this has to be true for all information set in the uh, information partition. Uh, well, again, I'm going to talk about examples uh, to clarify this description, but let me just give you two pieces of uh, notation, which is very similar to what we did in pure strategies uh, in uh, simultaneous move games. So S, the capital S sub I basically denotes the set of all pure strategies, but don't forget this set includes functions, all right? And so more mathematically S sub I is basically set of all functions from the information partition of player I into his available actions, given that uh, those functions must satisfy that action attached to information set is in fact action available at that information set. So this description and this descriptions are equivalent, all right? I just uh, used the shorter version, uh, just to uh, uh, save some space. Well, then the capital S, when we drop I, uh, the subscript I, means it's a profile of pure strategies. It's nothing but a Cartesian product of each player's, including the nature's uh, strategy sets. All right, so S1 cross S2 cross all the way up to Sn cross Sc, the meaning the strategies, uh, quote unquote, uh, strategies of the uh, uh, and, and nature. All right, so once again, let's go back to the example we talked about. Player one moves first, then player two, and then player one again. Well, in this game, what is a strategy will look like for player two? Because it's easier, so I start with player two. Well, the player two strategy, remember, map, uh, maps uh, her information partition, which is this uh, uh, set of sets, uh, into available actions. So remember available actions for her uh, after those two histories are X, Y, W, Z. All right, so for example, one history, well, obviously denoting the histories, I'm sorry, uh, strategies as vectors is easier, all right, uh, rather than a function. But for example, one such strategy for her is, for example, X, W. All right, so I'm gonna denote it by X, W. What does that mean? So this is like S2 one possible strategy for player two. It says map this info set, meaning whenever player one plays left, uh, and you observe that, I know, you have to play X, and whenever player one uh, moves right, meaning map this to W. 
All right. So exactly, so you can map left to x, uh, map right to w. But for example, this is not a strategy. Um, x, y. All right. Why is that? Well, because after so the second uh, uh, term corresponding the uh, 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 what strategy mapping this info set. Well, after right. Y is not an available action, so you're violating this part. So this function, therefore, is not a strategy, okay? Well, for that reason, because I have two strategies, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, histories, uh, information sets here, and for each info set, there's only actually two available actions. There's two to the power two, which is four available strategies, pure strategies for player two. So if you want, you can write them a set of strategies for player two are like x w one of them x z, oops z you you put comma or not up to you all right i i don't really mind and uh what else um y w and then y z so these are all available strategies all right and that's it well what about player one well player one again his strategy maps his information partition, which is a set including three different sets, remember, into all available actions for him. Well, don't forget, his strategy uh, is mapping, for example, empty set, the initial history, to one of those. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, so these are not all available actions, right? After the initial history, they should be left and right as well. So there's like two, four, six available actions. So after the initial history, obviously, the strategy cannot map it to B, right? Because B is not a choice for him after the initial history, meaning at this point. Only left and right are available strategies, available actions, I'm sorry. So therefore, if you want to map the empty set, you have to map it to either left or right. When you map this info set, you can map it either B or F, right? Because after uh, LX history or LY history, the only available uh, actions are B and F. And then finally, when you map this, you can map it to CD. So don't forget, a strategy for player one is going to map these three things to one of those available actions. So his strategies, when I write it in this fashion, is not a tuple, it's gonna be triple, right? Uh, the first component is basically the correspondence for the initial uh, decision node or null history. The second component is, you know, this info set or these two this, uh, histories. And then the final component is going to be the action he's going to take after these histories. So one potential history for, I'm uh, sorry, strategy for player one is um, L, B, C, right? Meaning, He's going to play left here, he's going to play B here, and he's going to play C here. Well, so when you verbally describe it, he's going to play C here, it is kind of contradicting, right? I mean, look, you're telling me that according to this strategy, he's going to choose left. So this part of the game will never be played. So why do I specify what the heck he's going to play if he actually... Uh, you know, after something that he's not going to be choosing. So he can play C only if he plays right, but you're telling me he's going to play left. Well, this is how we describe strategies anyhow. How? Trust me, it makes notation simpler, all right? Especially when the games get more and more complicated. So strategy maps each information partition to an available action, all right? So, you know, when once you you program this like a computer program trust me it, it 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 makes life easier but when you verbally describe it it makes no sense i understand but let's stick with the math uh, mathematical notation well this is not just the only strategy available for player one obviously uh, there's a bunch of other combinations for example uh, l b and d all right what else I'm not going to write, but there's going to be eight strategies for player one. Uh, what else? L, F, C. L, F, uh, L, yeah, L, F, D. And then R, B, C, R, B, D. And then the other two, the uh, R, uh, F, C, and R, 
FD. So there are eight total strategies for player one. Okay, that's it. Oh, before I finish, uh, let me again just uh, underline that. Uh, the strategies are going to specify what action players are going to play after every information set they have, even though some of those information sets are redundant uh, because of their earlier uh, strategies. Meaning here, for example, he's choosing left. And so this information set, I mean, this information set becomes redundant. And so specifying whether he plays C or D here makes no difference. But nevertheless, strategy should just tell us what he's going to do. All right. As I said, mathematically, this is easier. Later, as we walk on, uh, work on more complicated game, it is going to make our life, at least the calculations of equilibrium, much, much easier.